Hey, what's up? My name is J.M. Chaley and welcome to my channel. This week we're going to be doing a creature spotlight and we're going to be talking about birds. <laughs> Sorry, hold on. Birds? Yes, we're going to be talking about birds. Why? Okay, so creature spotlight is usually about these fantastic supernatural creatures and birds are not... One thing occurred to me that I thought was very interesting, and I love when animals are in fiction. We see a lot of birds in fantasy fiction, whether they're companions or familiars or anthropomorphous... Anth anth anthropomorphized. 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 Bird people. But let's first dig into the mysticism of birds. The whole idea of, of a bird from ancient people and, and beyond, prehistoric people would look at birds with, with great reverence because they could do something that humans couldn't do and probably have longed to do for thousands and thousands of years before the Wright brothers came along, which is fly. And it is it no wonder that we have so many mystical, mythological, and supernatural ideas of birds. So let's start there. Now, first of all, you have the religions. Now, before they were myths, they were religions. And you had sirens. Sirens were depicted as bird people, whether they had just a whole bird body in the, in the head of a human, or they were humanoid with wings and bird feet. They were depicted a couple of different ways. Sirens had these bird features because they were considered divine. Harpies were also depicted in a similar way. Even though they were evil, they were considered the hounds of Zeus, sent out to punish his enemies. They still had that kind of humanoid bird thing going on, or, or the body of a bird with the head of a woman. Uh, they weren't as beautiful as the sirens, but they certainly fit the bill that for a supernatural bird-type creature. Then there's angels, you know, the whole Judeo-Christian idea of an angel stemmed from these kind of ancient ideas of what some of these goddesses or divine uh, beings looked like with wings and bird features and things like that. It's no wonder that these traits carried over from the ancient into modern day depictions of angels. And these things date back to the Babylonian, Sumerian, other ancient religions where you start looking at bird goddesses or goddesses that had bird-like creatures like Inanna from the Sumerians or from the ancient Egyptians. You had Horus, you had Thoth, and a host of other bird-like gods within the ancient Egyptian. So the point being is that there are so many examples of divine beings out there where their divinity is represented with bird-like features. So now we get into the actual mythological birds themselves. All over the world, all different countries, people have always had mythological birds. And again, there are many, many, many to go on. I'm going to name only a few, and I'm gonna read them off here because I don't have them memorized. In China, we had the uh, Feng Huang. They call it the Chinese Phoenix, but really this had nothing in common with the Greek Phoenix. I'm not sure where it got its name, except that it was a very fiery looking bird. The different parts of its body represent the different words or values. The, the actual uh, character, the Chinese character, I guess, formed the shape of the head, the body, the wings and whatnot, and they represented different values like virtue, propriety, duty, credibility, and mercy. In Chile, they had the alicanto, which is a de desert-dwelling bird that didn't fly. Now, I love this bird. I think it's very cool. Um, its plumage, its feathers were metallic, and depending on what type of precious ore it was eating, its plumage, its, its feathers would take on the color of that material. So for example, if it was eating copper, its feathers would turn copper, gold would turn gold, silver, platinum, what have you. This bird would look like whatever it had been eaten, it had, whatever it had been eating. 
So miners, prospectors, who were out looking for precious minerals would spot one of these birds and follow it to wherever it was gorging itself and having its meal and they'd find, you know, veins of gold or whatever and they'd know where to mine. In the Philippines, there is the Ardana. The Ardana is a magical bird with healing powers. That's a common theme with a lot of these magical birds. They have healing powers, which is pretty interesting. I'm not sure across the seas and the continents how this trait was so prevalent across so many cultures that were dissimilar and separated. It's interesting. The Romans had the Caladrius, and this was another healing bird. It was an all-white bird. And instead of just, poof, you're healed, this bird would take in your sickness into itself. You'd be fine. It would, I'm not sure, the, the bird wouldn't die or anything like that. It wouldn't become sick. It would just absorb your sickness and then fly away, and you'd be, you'd be good. What, what the Caladrius did after that is not said. It's not spoken of. We don't know, but it absorbed your sickness and flew away. Among the Arabs was the roc, and the roc was this massive bird, this mountainous bird, and it really didn't have, I don't know, special powers. It was just big, and it's always shown flying off with an elephant. That's always like the classic rock picture, like this thing is so big that it just ate elephants, <laughs> kind of like the way hawks will eat mice. Um, that's kind of its whole gig, you know, it's just a giant, giant bird. And of course, we're going to talk about the phoenix from Greece. Now, the phoenix uh, actually wasn't truly immortal. They lived a very, very, very long time, maybe 900 years or more. And it would, it would die and be born again from the ashes, but it couldn't do that indefinitely. I think that's a, a misconception about the, the species. But... In the spirit of the Creature Spotlight series, we're talking about birds in terms of fantasy fiction and putting birds in our own works or the, the works that we love to read and whatnot. I'm not sure that we've seen a lot of Roman Caladrius birds in fantasy fiction. Those are, those are kind of cool ideas, right? But we haven't seen a lot of, we've seen a lot of phoenixes and stuff. We've seen a lot of sirens. They usually put them in water. Why do they always put them in water? Oh God. Angels, there's lots of fiction about angels. But there's a lot of fiction about just regular birds. Not maybe not about them, but they're around. I mentioned they're the companions, familiars, that sort of thing. But you know, they always seem to be about hawks, eagles, maybe other raptors, birds of prey, falcons, that sort of thing. Maybe vultures. We see vultures in fantasy fiction. But we see a lot of crows. We see a lot of ravens. We see owls a lot um and it's no wonder a lot of these birds are associated with with particular gods you know odin had hunan and moonan the two ravens that accompanied him the morgan with morgan with the, the crow she was always with the crows um you know these birds always represented something usually because a lot of these blackbirds, of course, were associated with, with carrion and death and things like that. So they have this kind of like importance to them where they were associated with witches and magic and things like that. But it's always the same kind of usual suspects, isn't it, about birds? Right? We never see like a lot of penguin books, do we? <laughs> so I have a short list of birds that I think would make a great addition to fantasy fiction. First off, I want to talk about the spoonbill. And this dude just looks cool. I mean, you put a spoonbill in your story and people are just going to be like, wow, that's weird. That's a weird, you know, you're just describing the, the bill with the shape of the spoon and all this kind of stuff. I just think that would be a cool, weird looking bird. That opens up the whole category of just weird looking birds you know google tawny frogmouth that's another good one right ghost bird all these kind of weird looking birds deserve some fantasy fiction just for the virtue of them looking weird and cool another good one is a puffin how cute are puffins right puffins would make a great addition to fantasy fiction especially if you're doing something up north in the in the north atlantic that sort of thing a puffin would be a fun, cute little addition to your story. Another one would be, oh my god, the shoebill stork. 
How have we not seen this dude more often? I mean, this guy, four feet tall, with this big ass shoe bill, like this thing's a dinosaur, okay? I mean, just have it walking around next to your main character. I mean, that would just kick ass. The one I kind of want to save for last, which I thought would be very cool and hasn't gotten enough love, is the starling. The starling is an amazing bird and they travel together in these massive flocks and when they move through the sky, they move in these big patterns to that are just utterly mesmerizing to watch and they call them murmurations and to watch them is just captivating. And I mean, honestly, I could just sit and just on YouTube and just relax and <laughs> just like, but the other cool thing about the starling is that they're related to, you know, magpies and other types of mimicking birds. They can talk, they can mimic. Who's my precious jabby bird? Who's my precious jabby bird? Who's my precious jabby bird? Who's my sweet jabby angel? Who's my precious? Who's my sweet jabby angel? So now imagine you have something that, you know, we've all seen the crow and the raven and they can speak and do all this kind of stuff. But what if we just tilt it a little bit more and it's a tiny cute little starling instead of a crow or a raven and it's talking or maybe you're, it's a familiar and the wizard actually has a whole flock of them and they can all talk and they move in these big murmurations through the sky and they can, they can kind of maybe uh, form up and make like a, a giant hand that comes in. <laughs> I don't know how that would work, but you know, do all this kind of crazy fantasy magic stuff. I mean, birds are really excellent and I think they just deserve the mention in Creature Spotlight. Even though they aren't supernatural unto themselves, they've been the inspiration for a great many supernatural things in mythology, religion, what have you. If you like this video, please give it a like, and as always, please subscribe. I post most Thursdays, and you can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.